are here to enjoy this every year. But another important reason is to honor the individuals whose values and accomplishments align with the organization's mission, and the awards themselves pay tribute to the leaders who have helped shape the Chicago Urban League's vision. Tonight, the first honors, which are the Lester H. McKeever Jr. Yeah, y'all know, y'all clap for that, you already know. A life director of the Chicago Urban League, and a man who demonstrates the quality of service, dedication, initiative, ability to mentor, encourage, and inspire others. The Lester McKeever Jr. Service Award recognizes individuals who have demonstrated strong commitment to improving the quality of life in Chicago's black residents and underserved communities. This year's recipient has had a legal career first as a federal criminal prosecutor in the position of assistant U.S. attorney of Illinois, then first executive inspector general for the agencies of the governor and its public universities, and as equity partner in a national law. Since 2018, she has served as president of Chicago State University. Give it up for that, Southside. 95th Street, where I'm from. Shouts out to Al Warner. Thanks for bringing me to the live today. Also, she ensured the transformation of students' lives through innovation, excellence, and ethical leadership. Somewhere in between all of that, she has taught at the prestigious law schools, including Northwest University, the Western University School of Law, University of Chicago Law School. She is a well known advocate for the equity in higher education, having formed a co chair of the equity working group a body of leaders from across the education, public, private, philanthropic, and community development sectors to formulate an action plan for addressing black students' access and success in Illinois higher education. The 2004 Lester H. McKeever Jr. Individual Service Award goes to President Z. Scott, y'all know how, the Scott. Come on, give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. She's wearing a lovely ensemble. Of <laughs> Good job. You know, I hate to hear somebody try to pronounce my name. I try, I try. Try to feel. Hey, everyone. I want to thank the Urban Police for this extraordinary honor. Receiving the Lester H. McKeever Jr. Individual Service Award holds a special significance for me, especially given Lester McKeever's remarkable legacy of leadership and service. I also want to extend my heartfelt congratulations to my co honoree, Dr. Carol Adams, on her receipt of the Edwin C. Berry Civil Rights Award. I first met Dr. Adams during my leadership of the, during her leadership of the state's largest human services agency. Since then, she has been a friend, a confidant, and a mentor, and I'm grateful for her steadfast commitment to our community. This moment feels even more proud, profound as we gather after a challenging week marked by the presidential election. Many of us are questioning the direction of our country and wondering if we still uphold the values that define us in times like these. I am reminded of the transformative power of community and collective action. And what I have to say to you today, it is time to double down. As president of the only four-year predominantly black institution in this state, I have news for you. Some of it good, some of it not so good. The rate at which black students in this state are going to college has dropped 37% in the last 10 years. There is so much data that has been collected about the black student experience that you do not hear about. When we get to college, we are the least likely to stay and be protected. 
And when we graduate from college, we are least likely to move into jobs with family sustaining wages. It is time for us to disrupt this narrative. But know that we have so many friends who have joined this fight. That's right. And many of them are in this room. And I never want to make the mistake of calling people out because I will miss someone. But I really want to highlight the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus That's right. for their work, That's right. for their concern, and their compassion for our people. I want to highlight my board chair, Andy Bond, for her tireless work in driving Chicago State forward. I want to highlight John Roback, who came and stood in the gap when we needed someone to manage the Chicago State Foundation. And I want to thank so many of you who have come to Chicago State, raised your hand, sat down, and got to work, including our Lieutenant Governor. So I do not feel alone today. I do not feel like when I move from this place with this award that you will forget me because you will not. That's right. Because there are so many friends of mine that call friends of me in this room. When I came down to Chicago State, one of the employees told me, it is one thing for you to come down to 95th King Drive, but it's another thing for you to bring your friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but in that I did. So many of you have volunteered, donated, and just offered words of encouragement. Ministers came and prayed for our campus. And I just want to let you know, again, that I feel supported in this work. And I feel supported by the early leaders. There are so many things and so many times that Karen Freeman Wilson has said, just let me get to work with you. It was the thing with the pandemic, where we joined forces to try and help our people move through it. It was the thing with voting. She was out there last week on stroll to the polls, marching with our marching band and with our students to tell them that the vote is important. But I want to deputize all of you in this room. You cannot leave this place and not care about our community. You cannot leave this place and not care about our people. Because our people need you right now in this place. So I want to thank Karen Freeman Wilson, the Urban League, and all of you for recognizing me with this award. This award is not for me, it's for you, it's for our people. So let's get down to work and thank you. One more round of applause for our recipient, please. All right, our second and final award this evening has long been considered the Urban League's highest honor, the Edwin C. Bill Berry Award, named for the renowned civic leader who was the Chicago Urban League president from 1956 until 1969. Yeah, you clap for that. He works to build closer relationships with organizations and prominent civil rights leaders. He recognizes individuals in advance to the cause of social justice. This year's recipient continues in the tradition. She has been described as a pan-Africanist and a solar act a scholar activist with the constant theme throughout her life being commitment to her people. The commitment first appeared when she served as civil rights activist and core president in her hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. 
It continued while she was at, a student at Fisk University, Ooh, marching, Fisk, Fisk in the building? Yes, marching with the legendary Reverend, Reverend C.T. Vivian. Later, she brought it here to Chicago for her association with a group of social engineers called The Catalyst, who defined her remarkable career and her worldview. She is best known by many for her past role as president of the DuSable Museum of African American History. Let's give it up for the DuSable. But she's also an author, a marketing guru, and an entrepreneur. Today, at 80 years of age, she is founder and CEO of the Urban Perspectives Consulting Firm. Let's give that a round of applause. Please join me in welcoming the 2024 recipient of the Bill Berry Award, Dr. Carol Adams. Thank you, Dr. Adams. She's so fly, look at her. Yeah, hey, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Big round of applause for Dr. Adams. This is the highest honor of the evening. Let's give it up for Dr. Adams. Thank you, Sam. It's great to be here. And to be here among so many friends. I don't want to start naming names because I would really probably mess up somewhere along the way. But I do want to just stop to acknowledge Karen for the payment for her extraordinary work here during her tenure at Chicago League. And of course, my friend, sister, daughter, Toy Salter for turning it out. Yeah. Only yeah. So I want to thank the Chicago Urban League for this singular honor, which is more significant because it references the iconic Edward Bill Berry, a man who for over 60 years dedicated his life to the Urban League and to the upliftment of our people who are in our fight for civil and human rights. And I want to dedicate this award to my daughter, Mia, and my bonus son, Vance, and the scores of former students and current mentees who keep me on my toes and in this room right now. I am one of those people for whom the Urban League was founded. One of those people that came here during the Great Migration. I was the tail end of the Great Migration. Had a that made that move to the Chicago Mecca for freedom. Freedom that I wasn't experiencing where I was before. Now I might have been from Kentucky, but I I ran here from upstate. The racism of Boston, Massachusetts. I made the Harriet Tubman move. Because I heard that Chicago had one million black people. I said, that's got to be my spot. Okay? So I came here when it was a town of black businesses, banks, and bravado. And I have never turned back from that. Because it has always been just a wonderful place to be. I don't think there's another city in the world like Chicago. So, I want to also give respect to my ancestors as we do with African people. To my parents, Clarence and Laura Adams, my big sisters, Dorothy and Muriel, and all the cousins, and everybody that poured into me to teach me who I am and who I belong to. Who I'm responsible for and what I need to live up to. And that's always going to be important. For me. But there's one particular Kentucky homegirl ancestor who I have to call now because she sort of took me under her wing when I came to Chicago and she kept me there until she made her transition. And she was a strong star within the Chicago League, and that is our young Boswell. You don't have a sister if you don't have a sister like her. That she would tell you what to do, when to do it, 
who was wrong, who was right, and all the rest of those things, and I loved her for every one of those things. So I want to talk about her and also the context of other people like Lester McKee, Bud Nancy, and Jim Thompson, and all of my good friends who have been a part of urban history. But my people, we have work to do. If you didn't wake up having to come twelve billion dollars richer last night, roll up your sleeves and get it. Rededicate yourself to our collective process. Everything we fought for is under attack. And we must honor those who have gone before by staying the course. Although we are the world's first people, the civilizers of the world, we are not just the people of yesterday, we are the people of the day after tomorrow. So what movement happened continues to happen through us and the cause of us. You know we built this country and it wasn't on rock and roll. Okay? So as I think about it, in closing I want to share a sort of love letter I wrote to Chicago in a volume that I published recently called That's All She Wrote. And it's called Missing Chicago. Because I miss that Chicago I moved to. And I want to just share a little bit with you. I want to drink some grown fresh orange juice and put some Joe Louis milk in my cereal. I want to fill up my tank with some gas from the Neely Brothers and put my money in Seaway Bank. Right. I want to tap dance in Sarah Dwyer's and take the kids to Mayfair Academy. I want to car shop with Al Johnson, Horace Noble. Get a custom suit from Cherry the Tailor and put some five from Ferragamos on 63rd Street. <laughs> I want to give my Chicago defender daily and listen to Purvis Fan and the rest of the good guys on WDB. Be on the scene with Bernadine and smack down in the middle with Yvonne Daniels. I want to go see Phil Grand and the Pharaohs at the Afro Arts Theater. I want to leave Brad the day break and go to Gladys's for breakfast. I want to ride the Jimmy down King Drive and spend the night in Washington Park. I want to play the numbers instead of the line. I want to run into Muhammad Ali on 79th Street by the Tiger Lounge, drive by the Wall of Respect on my way to the checkerboard. I want my Chicago back. Yeah. 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 Come on, y'all, Dr. Adams. So fly. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yes, yeah, I see it matching bullets too. Yeah, I was saying, I heard was, she said, you know I got my pimp cane, baby. I want to go to Isola's and get some food late at night. I didn't go to Roseland to get some old-fashioned donuts. Yeah, I want to go back to the days before Lemon Pepper, because Lemon Pepper just came out. I don't know. They only push it in the hood, and I'm telling you, Pepper, I don't trust it. It just came out. It don't taste like lemon, and it don't taste like pepper. What the hell is lemon pepper? Yeah, they try to brother, you sure you don't want the lemon pepper? I said, salt, pepper, mouth sauce, sir. You sure you don't want the lemon pepper? Look here, anyway, let me stop this. I start freestyling, I end up not hearing that shit. Okay. Please give Dr. Adams another warm round of applause. And congratulate both Dr. Adams and President Scott, two amazing leaders of Chicago. I can't even go any further. My wife, and my mother are sitting at that table over there, table 100. And I just have to acknowledge those two women who make my life what it is. My mother, too, is also 80 years old, so I can tell you, Paige, Mama, but you, you did it for us. We started in Woodlawn, we moved to Beverly. She did that, my mother, that's right. Yeah, y'all clap. And then they moved Beverly up to a few blocks because they got too black around there. <laughs> They did. They actually moved the signs up and put us in Brainerd. I don't know how you can change a whole community like that. But we already been here, so let's keep this going. Anybody live over there? Y'all know what I'm talking about. They moved it across Ashley. It's been a pleasure and an honor to serve as the host this evening. And while my time on stage is wrapping up now, there's still more to come, including more musical performance. And after that, there's an after party. This, uh, this Adams is doing this thing real big. But let me bring a legend to the stage. I know it might be the voice closer to do, but I want to do it. This man, you hear him on B103. He's a 